Mary Poppins is one of the most popular and acclaimed Disney movies. It represents the height of Walt Disney's career as a film producer, which is no small feat when you consider how many pictures he attached his name to. There are a lot of things Mary Poppins is known for, from its award-winning performances to its top-notch mix of animation and live action. But the most notable part of the movie by far is no doubt its soundtrack, written by Robert and Richard Sherman, which features almost too many pop culture mainstays to name. Well, I'll name some anyway. There's Spoonful of Sugar, there's Chim Chim Cherry, there's Super Califragilistic Expialidocious. But one song in particular stuck out to Walt Disney himself. So much so, that it became his favorite song. Man Behind the Mouse is a series where we take a look at various stories and achievements of Walt's life. And on today's edition, we're taking a look at the story behind Walt's fascination with Mary Poppins' most somber song, Feed the Birds. In Mary Poppins, Feed the Birds is both a sweet lullaby that Mary sings to the kids, and a haunting melody that plays when Mr. Banks walks to the bank to get fired for his kid's shenanigans earlier in the movie. Unlike the other songs in the movie, which are quite energetic, Feed the Birds is a solemn and serious tune about an old woman selling breadcrumbs at St. Paul's Cathedral. It's the kind of song that makes you stop and think, the kind I imagine would play when you're taking a wistful walk alone. That's why I think it fits so well in the scene where Mr. Banks is walking to his doom. He's walking regretful of his actions. You can see it when he passes the old bird woman's steps and sees she isn't there. Earlier that same day, he discouraged his kids from helping her out in the smallest way. That is, by giving her a bit of money for her bread. And therein lies the real gist of the song. It doesn't take much to brighten someone's day. Even a small effort can make all the difference for some people. With a moral like that, it's easy to see why Walt himself was so fond of the song. During and after development of Mary Poppins, Walt often requested that the Sherman brothers come to his office and play Feed the Birds for him. Robert Sherman would speak about how him and his brother would play the song for Walt every Friday and Walt would spend the song looking out the window of his office, looking all wistful and stuff. And once it was over, he'd turn around and say, that's what it's all about. And by, that's what it was all about, Walt meant the theme of the whole movie. Doing just a little extra, and going just a little bit out of your way to make someone feel special. As Richard Sherman would say, Sometimes, doing a little extra can make all the difference in the world to a person. And that's really Mary Poppins in a nutshell. It's about how even small gestures go a long way to making someone feel great. It's kind of a thesis statement for the movie, if you will. Remember, at this point in Walt's life, he was very busy with so many different projects in film, TV, and theme parks. He had become something of a philanthropist at this point, building the Cal Arts School, and attractions for the World's Fair. And even besides those, his whole career, from the Mickey Mouse days to Disneyland to beyond, had been built off making people happy, even in the smallest way. A few minutes at a time with his first animated shorts, to a few hours with his full-length features, to a whole day with Disneyland. It's no wonder that Feed the Birds resonated with him so much. And of course, as a quiet, bashful kind of person in private, I'm willing to bet Walt just enjoyed the song as an opportunity to look back and, and think, much like Mr. Banks did in the movie. And I'm sure like many of us do, when we have a lonely walk to take, like Mr. Banks did. In the years since Walt's passing, Richard Sherman continues to play Feed the Birds to honor Walt. And one of his most notable performances was at the dedication of the partner statue, that one with Walt holding hands with Mickey. 
There's a cool little story that Richard likes to tell about his performance on the dedication ceremony. Here's a little clip. Actually, over the years, uh, he'd call us in on a Friday afternoon and ask us what we were working on, then we would tell him, and then he'd say, uh, play it. <laughs> like, like, play it again, Sam, you know? Just play it. And so we'd play this song for him. And he'd always look out the north window of his, of his office and then he'd say, have a good weekend, boys, and send us home. <laughs> and that was, that was our relationship. And uh, after Walt left us, I uh, used to go there on Friday afternoons and play it for him. And this time I'm playing it for you again, Walt. It's a pretty moving story told by one of the last people to have known Walt personally in great detail. Coincidentally, Feed the Birds is also the only song that Mary Poppins author Pamela Travers actually liked. Her dislike of the movie adaptation is famous, so I think it's pretty amusing that she and Walt shared an appreciation for this song in particular. Well, that's all I have to say about that. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Man Behind the Mouse. Mary Poppins is no doubt Walt's biggest movie of his lifetime. So I love to discover little stories like these about the movie, and share them with you. I'd love to know your thoughts on the song. Is it your favorite of the movie? I know it's mine, but there's more than a little bias in there. Well, that's all I have for now. Have a swell day, and I'll see you later.